How you doing? It's Johnny Miller from Point Blank Online. I'm a course developer and tutor down at the school and uh, today I'm going to show you a cool little trick with Ableton Live using the vinyl distortion device. What we're going to do, we're going to create some audio from the vinyl distortion device and by way of resampling and processing. Uh, we're going to create some really, really cool glitchy sound effects that you can lay on top of your beats. So here's the vinyl distortion folder and uh, I've opened it up and I'm just going to load in the vinyl preset. And on here, I'm just going to turn the volume right up and bring the density up to just over one, one and a half. And uh, that gives me a little bit of crackle. If I go too high on this density, we start to get too much noise, too much kind of hiss. So I want to keep that fairly low. So we just get the odd pop and crackle. And from here, I'm going to add a compressor and this is just going to even out the dynamics of this track now. I'm just going to bring the threshold right down. And that just means that the quieter pops will appear louder and the louder pops will be quieter. So we all get a nice level playing field. Each crackle is roughly the same volume now. Lastly, I'm going to put a limiter on here. This is just going to ensure that we don't go over zero and we don't get any spikes in level. Now from here, what I want to do, just turn that off for a second. What I want to do is record this. And um, I'm going to set up another audio track and just use Ableton's resampling function, which is nice and simple. On the audio track three, this is what I'm going to record to. I'm going to record the signal from audio track two, which has got my vinyl crackle on, over to audio track number three. And of course, it's going to go through all these processes, the compressor, the limiter. And we're just going to record some raw audio onto track three. So in the routing, which is the little I.O. button here, um, I'm going to go audio from resampling. And uh, now I'm just going to turn the track back on. Arm audio track number three. And just hit record. Now I don't have to record too much, just a, a little bit. A couple of seconds. There we go. All right. So let's turn off track number two now. Go into the audio I've just recorded on track number three. And there we go. I actually recorded two bars worth of crackle. So let's have a listen to that. And I'm just going to hit play on this clip on audio track number three. There's my crackle. Now from here, all we need to do is tune this. We need to change the warping on it and finally cut it up into bits. So we've got a rack that contains lots of little glitchy samples. Now in terms of tuning, we can just use transpose here. And if I change that right up, up to plus 48 semitones, we're starting to get this nice kind of clean glitchy noise. If I just bring the volume of this clip up a little bit too. So straight away, just the tuning of that clip up by 48 semitones has given us quite a nice character. If I was to change the warping mode to tones and then play with the grain size, we get even more interesting effects. So the grain size here is almost like a pitch. The higher the grain size, the deeper the tone of the glitches. If I bring the grain size right down, we get quite kind of high pitched glitches. I've just quickly deleted the uh, original rack that had the crackle, the vinyl crackle and the compressor and stuff. That's all gone. I've got this audio. That's all I need now. And I've also shortened the clip. So instead of being two bars, which I recorded, I've now got just one bar. Now I'm going to create a glitch rack that's going to contain little clumps of these glitches that I can play on a note on the keyboard and just layer up with some drums and make a nice little glitchy side uh, effect onto the beat loop that I've got here in Session View. But before I do that, I need to render the effect of this transposition and grain size, all the stuff I just did a few moments ago. I need to render this onto the audio. Now to do that, we can use another trick that we've covered before, freeze flatten. So I'm going to freeze the track, just right click. Right click again, flatten. And now I've got the audio, the transposition, the, uh, the tones mode, the warping effect actually rendered onto the audio itself. And you can see now the audio looks a little bit different. So there we go. Now all I'm going to do is put these little glitches as separate samples into a drum rack. And I do that by way of slice to new MIDI track. Ableton's going to pick up on where these transients are inside the clip and give me a drum rack that contains each one of those transients as a separate sample. So 
right click, slice to new MIDI track. Create one slice per transient, this will result in 12 slices, okay? And there is my glitch rack that contains all the little clumps of glitches as single slices. Now what I can do, if I just get rid of the original clip that Ableton's given me, if I just put in a new one bar clip, and if I put the beat on, actually quickly, I'm just gonna delete the original audio. Don't need that anymore, because I've got all the audio inside my glitch rack as individual slices. So we've got basically 12 copies of the same piece of audio, but split up into each little clump of glitches. So the slice to MIDI rack just picked up on where all the transients were and gave me a separate slice per group of glitches. So I'm going to put this beat on, and this is from one of the uh, Berkson and Watt sample packs. Really nice beat. And I'm just going to start overlaying now some glitches onto this. I'm just going to program them in. And for now, I'm just going to throw a few notes in there and just kind of see what I get. If I turn the beat down a bit, this is what I'm adding. I'm just going to have a little play with some of these, try and get a bit of a slightly better rhythm. If I put more glitches in. Slice 12 sounds quite nice. I'm going to move some of these slices up to 12. So there we go. I've added some little glitches and a nice rhythmic pattern alongside this beat. We could process this if we wanted to as well. Maybe if I add something like overdrive. Turn it down a bit. Maybe set up some sidechain compression on this too. Let's sidechain this to the beat. So we get that nice pump. We've done this before. And how about lastly, let's put some reverb on here. I'm just going to set this up using a, an insert effect where I've added the reverb directly onto the track. There we are, that sounds nice. So I've taken that beat loop and I've really made it my own by adding this kind of glitchy rhythmic pattern to it. And that's unique, no one in the world has those sounds because I made them using the vinyl crackle, resampling, and now I've just created that pattern inside the MIDI clip from single notes, from single slices. So try this out, you get some really, really interesting results. Try the different vinyl crackle presets, uh, try different effects processing before you resample the vinyl crackle. And at this end, after you've done the slice to MIDI and you've programmed up a little clip with your rhythm in it, um, try some different effects, try some delays maybe, some filter delays, there's a hundred different things you could try here. So have fun experimenting with this and I'll see you again next time. Peace.